Hi everyone, this is Buggyhawk. Welcome to Turtle Time. In this episode, we'll continue to work on the code from last time and head towards our goal of a self-sustaining forester. We're going to improve the way the forester works and we're also going to make it do some extra tasks, including planting saplings, making sure we harvest trees completely and collecting fallen saplings. When a tree's been harvested, we have to plant a sapling in order for another tree to grow. There's no reason why we should do that when we've got a turtle doing all the other work for us. Providing we have saplings in the inventory, the turtle API has a function that will do this for us. The place function can be used for quite a few things. and One of them is planting saplings or seeds. We'll put saplings in slot 2 of the turtle's inventory. This means that slot 1 is for fuel and slot 2 is for saplings. So we'll need to tweak the cargo dropping code so that it doesn't drop items from slots 1 or 2. That will let us plant saplings, but there's a tricky issue with this. When the turtle's harvested a tree, it's sitting on the block that we want to plant the sapling in. We could move off the block, turn round and plant the sapling, then turn back again and carry on. But that makes things very messy when we've harvested the other trees and we want to get back to the starting position. A better way to do this is to take advantage of the place down function. The turtle can plant a sapling in the block below it, providing it's hovering one block above the ground. Here's how this can work. Before we call go to tree, we'll move the turtle up one block. We'll then move to the tree and harvest it as before. This will leave a one block stump. So when the turtles come back down again, we'll need to dig up the stump and then plant a sapling. After that, we'll continue as we did before, moving to the next tree and so on. Edit the Forester program. Down in the main loop, add turtle up just before the harvesting loop. Don't put it inside the loop or the turtle will keep going up an extra space for each tree. When the turtle has come home, we need it to move down again before it empties out its cargo. We need to put this in the go home function, just before the cargo emptying loop starts. Now to add the code to dig up the stump and plant the sapling. Go to the harvest tree function. At the end of that function, add the following code. Remember that we need to select slot 2 in the turtle's inventory to make sure we're trying to plant a sapling and not a piece of coal or a block of wood. We also need to remember that when we empty the cargo, we don't want to empty slots 1 and 2 now. So find the loop in Go Home and start the loop at 3 instead of 2. Save that file and exit, then back it up. Let's check that we have coal in slot 1 and saplings in slot 2. Then execute the program. You'll notice that whether a tree is harvested or not, the turtle digs up the sapling and replants one. That's not good, because trees take time to grow, and each time you dig one up, you're resetting the clock. We only want to do that final dig and plant a sapling if a tree was actually harvested. But how can we tell? Well, let's take another look at the Turtle API. This is the table of functions. Until now, I've been skipping over the details of the tables so that we could just get things done. We can take a closer look now to get a better understanding of what it actually shows. The left column describes the return value from the function. This is a result that we can test or store that's available when the function is completed. For example, the turtle forward function returns a boolean value. That's either true or false, and it says whether it's successfully moved forward or not. The getItemCount function returns a number to say how many items were in the slot. The dig function returns a boolean to say whether it successfully dug something or failed to. So, in the harvest tree function, when we try to dig the first block, we can create a variable and store the result of the dig attempt. 
If there is a tree, the turtle will successfully dig the block, so the dig function will return true. If there isn't a tree, because the sapling hasn't grown yet, the dig function will return false. Either way, the turtle will still move forward after the dig attempt. There's no point harvesting a non-existent tree. So we can test that value now to decide whether to try. This might look like we're missing something. Up until now, all our conditions have involved comparing two values. For example, get item count 1 is greater than 0. Or get fuel level is less than 80. A condition has to be a logical statement that is true or false. If the fuel level is less than 80, then it's true. Otherwise, it's false. In the case of testing the tree dug value, that's already boolean, so it's true or false. If we wanted to be a bit long-winded and wasteful, we could write it like this to compare the value stored in the tree dug variable explicitly. But that's not necessary. Oh, just a bit more information at this point. Assignment, which is when you store a value into a variable, uses a single equals sign. Comparison, which is when you're testing the value of a variable, uses a double equals sign. I'll introduce other comparison symbols as they're needed. Indent everything to the last dig. We can try to plant a sapling every time, whether we've harvested a tree or not. If there's already a sapling in place, nothing will happen. If there isn't, then we'll successfully plant one. It's possible that a sapling might be missing because it's the first time running the program, or you accidentally dig one up. Let's see this in action. It turns out that in an earlier episode, I was wrong, so my apologies for that. A birch tree can actually grow to seven blocks high. This means that some of our harvested trees might be left with a single block of wood at the top. We can combine two things that we've now seen to make the tree harvesting better. We can use a while loop instead of a four, and we can also use the success result of the dig up function. The advantage of this is that it will always harvest the complete tree, regardless of how tall it is. Also, for short trees, it will only dig the blocks it needs to. Let's replace the harvesting for loop with the while equivalent. We could store the result from the dig up instruction and test that, but we don't need the result for any other purposes, so it's a bit quicker and cleaner to use the function directly. but now we don't know how far up we've gone. So how far down should we go? Well, the turtle move commands, up, down, forward, back, even the turn commands, all have a success value returned from them. This means that we can use another while loop to keep moving down until it hits a blockage. The only instruction we need to repeat is the turtle down, so we don't need any code inside this block. One thing to watch out for with turtles that move using while loops is that if you get the condition wrong, you can end up losing the turtle. This has happened to me, with a turtle moving up without a limit. I had to build a tower of dirt 200 blocks high to retrieve a turtle that had eventually run out of fuel. Let's check what we've got now to see if it's working. We're expecting it to dig up through the top of the tree and skip past any saplings.
there's another possible problem that's now arisen. Whilst the turtle's busy harvesting, a sapling behind it might grow into a tree. This means that the turtle won't be able to get back home, at least not using the direct line across the tree positions. To fix this problem, we'll get the turtle to go past the trees on its way home. This would be a good opportunity to split the go home function into two parts, one to travel home and the other to unload the cargo and turn around. To start with, we'll write the function to move from the end of the harvesting run back to the chest. To avoid the trees, we'll turn right, move forward one, and turn right again. Then we can travel the 16 blocks back to the home location without actually going over a sapling. We can then turn right, move forwards one and turn left and be in the same position we would have been if we'd just come back the original way. Now update the go home function to use this new function. Delete the code that turned the turtle around and moved home and replace that with a call to our new function, return to chest. Let's try this to make sure it's behaving properly. That leaves one more thing to do before we start on a different project next time. At the moment, we need to manually provide fuel and saplings to the turtle. We'll do some more work on the fuel next episode, but for now, we can get the turtle to collect the saplings that fall from the trees we've harvested. How do we actually get the turtle to pick up saplings? Well, there's a function for that. Turtle.suck this will pull in any dropped objects that are on the block in front of the turtle. The turtle will try to place the items in its currently selected slot, so we need to make sure that we've selected slot 2 to store the collected saplings properly. Saplings will drop in random places, so to maximise the number we collect, we need to check all around the turtle. To do this, we'll suck in each direction, turning the turtle around until it's facing in the same direction it started. Now we need to get the turtle to do that all the way around the trees. We'll do this in a function called Check for Saplings and get the turtle to travel in a circuit around the trees. After every forward movement, we'll call the collect saplings function to hoover up anything that we find.
we'll need to wait for a while after doing any tree harvesting to give the leaves chance to disappear and the saplings to drop. I found 2 minutes or 120 seconds to be a good amount of time to wait. Update the main program to wait 2 minutes and then gather any fallen saplings. We should also take those 2 minutes off of the call to sleep that we already have. This isn't a perfect way to collect saplings. Sometimes they'll fall in places the turtle doesn't quite reach, even though it looks like it should. That shouldn't matter though, so long as the turtle collects at least as many saplings as the number of trees it cuts down. Let's try this and see how well it works. Oops. Here's an example of an unforeseen problem, and how I solved it. The turtle didn't get back home. Why did that happen? The disk drive is in the way. When the turtle came down the right hand side of the trees, it was trying to move 17 spaces, but the disk drive is on the 17th space. The turtle tried to move forward, but failed, then continued with its program. This meant it turned right, moved forward, did a collection, and turned right again. If nothing had gone wrong, it would have been in front of the chest. The suck function also pinched the disk from the drive too. Let's stop the program, take out the disk from the turtle and use a command to move the turtle back into the correct starting position. We can put the disk back where it belongs, then take a look at the code and quickly fix a couple of issues. First, it occurs to me that the turtle is only checking to make sure it's got 80 units of fuel. This might not be enough now for the potential harvesting, planting, moving and collecting that it does. We should increase that to 160, that's two pieces of coal, to make sure it will have enough fuel to do each run. Next, there was the problem of bumping into the disk drive. The 17th space is the drive. We could change the loop to only move 16 spaces forward instead. Then it would stop in front of the drive. But it would still suck out the disk. So we'll shorten its run to 15 spaces. Then, after it's finished the rest of its movement, turning right, moving forward, the final collection and turning right again, we can make it back up the last two spaces to the chest. Here it goes for one more run to check those changes work OK. Thanks for watching. See you next time.